We have been testing Tesla's full self-driving obstacle avoidance for years. These clips are from version 11 and version 12, and now we're all the way up to version 14. What I've noticed with Tesla's full self-driving version 14 update is that it is very aware of the road in front of it. Not only does it have great perception, it reacts to things really quickly, and maybe it overreacts a little bit sometimes. But we had to pull the car out and try these avoidance tests again to see how it does with various objects that you may or may not actually encounter in the real world. But overall, I do these tests just to see how the system is responding and evolving over time, and I was pretty surprised with some of the results in this video. Now, the first couple tests I did here were just cardboard boxes, which I thought were pretty much a gimme. I started with a bigger cardboard box and then went smaller, and I actually went in two directions because the sun was pretty low during these tests, and I thought I would ramp up the difficulty by driving directly into the sun. Now, although I thought these tests were a gimme, going back and looking at past tests with cardboard boxes, the car actually did run them over several times in older tests. So it does not care about garbage boxes in the road. So happy to report here that Tesla's FSD version 14 was able to easily avoid both the bigger and smaller cardboard boxes, even when driving directly into the sun. And you can see how dirty my windshield is. All right, now as I'm doing these tests, don't get distracted by the two microphones. This is a very professional production. I realize the main question or a major question that a lot of people are gonna have are what's the difference between a 2023 Tesla Model Y with hardware four and no front bumper camera compared to this 2026 Tesla Model Y, also hardware for exact same software version, but it does have the front bumper camera right here. And we're gonna test that right now. We're gonna see if this box can be avoided equally by both cars. And we have four different things we need to do here. Number one, both cars are going to test it from far away. That's two, one for each car. And then number two, I'm gonna place this directly in front of the bumper where the front cameras on the car at the top that both cars have, this car can't possibly see that. But the new Tesla Model Y with front bumper camera, this will obviously be right in the way of the camera. So let's see how these cars react differently to this box. All right, so starting off this test here, we can see the box is clearly visible in the main front camera for the 2023 Tesla Model Y that we're in right now with no front bumper camera. If we go to wide, the box is even easier to see there. All right, so this one should be pretty easy for the car. Let's start this. It doesn't really have anywhere to go because the box is in the way along with my camera over there, but we'll see what it does here. And so it is scared of the box. You can see it's trying to get around it. And it's also blocked by the camera, but pretty obvious the box was detected and the car did not hit it. All right, so next up we're taking this box, we're putting it directly in front of the car. We have about one foot of space between the front bumper and the box. I think we know what's gonna happen. All right, so this time we go into the service menu, we check camera preview, no box to be seen, pretty obvious there. And we go to wide, no box. The car cannot see the box at all. So I think we know what's gonna happen, but we have to verify. And I'll probably stop it quick here because I need that box to continue the testing. And we can see there that the box was hit, uh, the car had no regard, um, and that's that. All right, and then just for the sake of having a control, here's our box far away, just to show that this vehicle can stop for it when it sees it, main, wide, you can see it in both of those. And on top of that, if we go to fascia, that is our front bumper camera, and that is what the front bumper camera can see. Uh, that's a lot wider than the preview uh, that they give you, pretty interesting. So if I click start self-driving here, I think we know that it's going to attempt to avoid the box. There's not much room on both sides, but there you go. The car is clearly trying to drive around that box. All right, and to wrap it up, we're gonna take this box and put it directly in front of the front bumper camera and see if the car can avoid it. All right, so checking out our camera preview. Main, no box, wide, no box to be seen. But if we go to fascia, that front bumper camera, boom, it's right there in the way. And we can even see that without digging into menus. Uh, the front bumper camera is easily accessible by the consumer. This is what it looks like kind of on the end user look. So we can't see quite as uh, wide as it can see. But if we click this start self-driving, is it actually gonna stop for the box or is it gonna drive right through it? So we click start. There's nowhere for the car to go. There is uh, a garage behind me and a box in front of me. So for whatever reason, you can see that the performance of the 2026 Model Y with a front bumper camera is similar to then without a front bumper camera. Um, and this camera is being used. I have seen an error message now only on version 14 uh, about the fact that if this front bumper camera is covered, uh, the car complains at me and lets me know, hey, this is covered, you should probably clean it off. Now moving forward here, I thought this test would be pretty difficult. It is a very small children's bike and it is laying on the road almost completely flat. Even pulling up to it myself, it was difficult to see, although I could definitely see it. And personally, I would easily be able to avoid this if I was paying attention, of course, which humans aren't always doing. And I was very happy to see that FSD also avoided it. And from the driver's seat felt like it left plenty of space to avoid it appropriately. 
appropriately. Now, I thought this object was a little ridiculous because it is literally mostly clear, but when watching the footage, when it's static, laying in the road, even though it's small and mostly clear, FSD is able to see and avoid it. Really nice. Even driving directly into the sun, FSD had no problem with this object. But a ball is not usually going to be just sitting there randomly in the middle of the road. It's probably going to be moving because somebody threw it or the wind is blowing it, and FSD's reaction here was incredibly impressive and dramatic. From far away, FSD is hitting the brakes, letting that ball pass by, and when it's clear, FSD does proceed. I was very impressed with this result, especially from a small, clear ball. Take into consideration that a couple of versions ago, FSD could not even avoid a large exercise ball that is not clear in any way, and that makes this result even more impressive. And of course we had to throw the ball a little later to make this even more difficult. Of course there will come a point where something can come in front of the car where it is physically impossible to stop for it, so we tried to get really close to that limit, and believe it or not, FSD was easily able to stop for this object, even employing emergency braking. And throw! Automatic emergency braking. What? Yep. Was the ball under there? Yeah. And it even saved the dash cam clip. Okay, so it probably shouldn't proceed, but it at least gave me enough time to take over. Even on these gravel dirt roads with low traction, FSD did a great job stopping. And I hear some of you in the comments, you don't want to stop for every little object here, but thinking what I would do in this situation, if I didn't know what this object was and it was this size, I would definitely be stopping for it. You don't know what weight it is. You don't know what's inside of it. You don't know where it came from. So personally, I think this stopping decision was really good. So we had to do the test with the exercise ball as well, just to compare it to those older versions. To no surprise, it does stop here, but again, we have to look back to those older versions and remember that the car was trying to stop for this and maybe just didn't have enough foresight or who knows why but those older versions just were simply unable to correctly interact with this object uh yeah i didn't think it would even have time to stop that time i can't believe that on a gravel road and while I feel like back then the capabilities that Force Off Driving had should have let it interact correctly with this object then, I'm happy to see that now it is doing a great job of slowing and stopping for this exercise ball. Now of course we have to make these tests increasingly difficult, so we have a small remote controlled Tesla Roadster here, and the car is actually able to see it in the road and avoid it. And believe it or not, older versions were also able to see this Tesla Roadster and avoid it. But we had to crank up the difficulty even more, and we had the Tesla Roadster drive across the road in front of Tesla's FSD version 14, and the car was correctly able to slow and stop for it and wait to pass by. Now, on top of that, something unexpected happened that we didn't plan for. The Roadster hit a rock, flipped around, and started driving back in the other direction towards the Tesla. And before I even had realized that it happened, the Tesla started to again apply the brakes to avoid this object that suddenly did a 180 and started coming back towards it. Oh my gosh, it's, oh, it's coming back. That was crazy. We didn't plan for this. It was a huge surprise for me, and it really emphasizes how quickly Tesla's FSD version 14 can make decisions and react to changing environments. Now, because FSD 14 is so good at reacting to changing environments, I really had to crank this up. I first put this bucket here just to make sure FSD could react to this standard bucket, which with what we've seen so far, I think was pretty obvious. It was easily going to be able to avoid this. But where we crank up the difficulty is not only is this bucket in the road, but at the last second, debris is going to fly out from this bucket and FSD is going to have to react in a very short amount of time. Now this test gave me slightly mixed results. I was hoping that the front bumper camera would really help out FSD here, and it did react to the moving dynamic objects that kind of popped out at the last second, but it seemed that it didn't have enough care for what was now in the road. Now in the first test, when the cone pops out, FSD does seem to kind of weave in between the bucket and the cone, but I wasn't convinced. I thought maybe FSD just got lucky and the cone was far enough away, and the vehicle was able to squish through those two objects, so we had to add in a little bit more. Now, we put the traffic cone right in the middle without moving just to see if the car could react to it or how it would, and FSD definitely slowed down and tried to get around the cone, but it seemed to be too scared of either the objects on the side of the road or my wife on the side of the road, even though she was far away and sitting in a chair, and instead of either stopping or moving more off of the road to avoid the cone, it decided to just run the cone right over, despite having that front bumper camera. Do the box and the ball. Put them both in front of the cone. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, the cone will be your gunpowder. 
and the box and the ball will be your bowling ball like we're making a cannon in the Civil War. Here. So I thought maybe the cone wasn't quite enough. Let's bring some more objects into the mix, load this garbage can in, and have more pop out for the car to be able to react to. And I will say, I was pretty happy that FSD was able to react to these moving objects that got in the vehicle's way, and it did avoid both the ball and the small box, but again, it just pretty much ignored the cone and ran it over. I find this very strange and very interesting that this is the one object we can find in these tests, so far at least, that FSD wants to ignore and run over. Now, although we were able to bring out a fail, in my opinion, I had to bring the difficulty up just a little bit more, and I'll admit, even this object I missed at some point and wasn't able to see it. This is a small spoke for a children's bike and it is bright pink. So it's a bright color, but it's very small and it's not something that is a size that you would typically react to. But I think if you hit this the right way, it really could damage your tire or your car because it is a big, heavy chunk of metal. And in pretty much all of the tests that we did, FSD just completely ignored it and ran right over the spoke. Now, my wife was thinking, hey, maybe if we stand it up, it'll make it easier for the car to see. And I thought that was a great idea, so we tested it out. And I'll admit, in this first test with the spoke standing up, I didn't see it the entire time. All right, standing pink bike spoke. I cannot see it as of now. I still don't see it. Where is it? I, I didn't see it. Was it there? Yeah, you can right over it. Oh my gosh, I didn't see, I could not see it, like with my own eyes. So it's hard for me to call this a complete failure by the car because I myself could not see this object for a large part of this testing. But at the same time, the car has more eyes than me and it has that front bumper camera. So I would hope for some superhuman abilities here for the car to be able to pick up this object, react to it appropriately, which you can leave down in the comments what you think an appropriate reaction to a heavy bike spoke is. So I consider this a mild fail, but also a fail on the human's part. Now, as we've seen here, small obstacle avoidance and moving obstacle avoidance is really good and pretty interesting. Although I have seen and I've heard others talk about how it's even avoiding things like leaves blowing across the road, which we know is not the right situation. Although again, it is super interesting to see the car thinking and reacting to these things. It needs to be just a little bit smarter so it's not overreacting when it doesn't need to. Now, the next situation I've been really curious about is a pretty standard traffic situation you'll find in construction where somebody's holding a stop sign and then flips it over to slow. And I haven't quite been able to find it in real life so we simulated it here. I first had my wife standing on what I would consider the wrong side of the road and the car didn't do a great job reacting, but I thought maybe because she's on the wrong side, it's kind of weird. So not a big deal that the reaction wasn't perfect here. No, it's not going. Uh, go ahead and wave us on. <laughs> no, it doesn't want to go. Uh, what if, yeah. I move out of the way. Okay. Yeah, I mean, pretty obvious it should have kept going when you switched to slow, but. All right, here we come. Oh, the sun. All right, it sees you, it's visualizing a little person there. It's visualizing a stop sign, but it is continuing through. Okay, that. I mean, that was the right thing to do. It's on yeah. stop. All right, cool. Yeah, it's just, I mean, you're on the wrong side of the road, so I can see how that could be a little confusing. Um, I mean, to a human, it was obvious what I should have done, but uh, let's see if the car can handle it better when you'd be, because you would be on this side. So there we go. It just started slowing. Let's get my, I have to keep putting my hat so low because of the sun. All right. I like the stopping position. Let's give it a second here. All right. Go ahead and flip that around. Okay. That's much better. So maybe being on the other side of the road was just a little too weird for it. But that was nice. Very nice. It felt like the car was going really fast coming at me. I know you're oh. in furry mode. Okay. But just like. No, it's good to know. It's another one of those courtesy things, but. Yeah, so it should have slowed earlier. Yes. Got it. Like, usually when people see a construction zone, they slow way down, like, early enough because there's workers standing there. Right, for sure. Yep. All right, here we go. So, somebody throwing a cardboard box at the car test. This is into the sun. So this is all you. I'm letting you decide when when to do it and what to do. Let's I don't want to damage the car. Just go, go, go. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little light, huh? <laughs> it looks 
is so funny. It did hit the brake a little bit. It did hit, it just barely tapped the brake. 